today we're installing the three major components of your ESS chassis system. Your skeleton rifle stock for the ESS, we have the ESS chassis base and the ESS forend, all three of which are required for to build your ESS chassis system correctly. We'll be doing these installation instructions for the Tika T3, but these instructions will apply to any barreled action supported by the ESS system. First thing we're going to do with this barreled action is make sure that it's safe. We're going to remove the bolt and ensure that there's no ammunition in the chamber. So now that we have a safe barreled action, we can go on to assembly. So this is our ESS chassis base. You can tell that it's the ESS because it's actually the shortest base that we make of any chassis because you have a modular foreign that you're able to switch out and same thing with your buttstock, you're able to switch it out as need be. So underneath the foreign interface here, you have your polymer handguard where you can actually uh, access the screws and switch out your foreign as need be. You have your barricade stops that are cut into the front of the chassis and they're grooved to make sure that you get good purchase on barricades and other obstacles. You have an ambidextrous mag latch that's present on some of our other chassis systems and reaches out both sides, allowing the user to detach the magazine quickly. And then also your integrated thumb shelf on both sides of the chassis. All right, so when you go to install your ESS chassis base, you're going to be looking for a couple key things that are unique to our chassis. One of them, which is unique to the Tika, is that we have the recoil lug already pre-installed into your chassis. So with that, you have this small metal um, rectangular type piece that your actual action is going to butt up against and it's going to transfer the recoil from your action into the recoil lug. Um, on a lot of our other chassis that you'll see, we won't have this installed. You'll have an actual pocket where the recoil lug that's integral to your action or sandwiched between your barrel and, barrel and action will sit uh, flush up against and that'll be transferring the recoil from the barreled action to the chassis. So moving back from there, we'll have our two action screw holes, one right behind the recoil lug on the Tika and one all the way at the rear, which is quite similar along, across a lot of the actions. Some are slightly different in position. And we also have our V-block bedding surfaces that run front to rear and the trigger pocketing, which you have to make sure is all aligned correctly. All right, so as you can see, the underside of the action has this little slot cut in it, and then that's gonna mate up with the actual recoil lug inside the chassis. So as we flip this over now, we wanna make sure that everything sits on comfortably and isn't interfering with anything. And now we're seated. All right, so here, our next step is to install the two action screws which we've supplied in the box. We have our shorter of the two front action screws and our longer of the two rear action screws. You're going to take your front action screw and drop that into the front hole there, kind of just right behind your recoil lug, and your rear action screw is going to go into this rear hole almost all the way back at your pistol grip. From there, you're going to take the correct tool for the job. So in this case, it's a 5 mil Allen key, and you're just going to snug up the two action screws not overly tight, but just so, in, so that you can move the chassis around. What you may have to do is slightly rock the chassis back and forth just to ensure that the screw engages on the threads correctly. So depending on the model of barrel action you have, the Allen key size is going to differ slightly. Once you've got these two snugged up and in place, you're going to lift the whole barrel action up and place it so it's sitting on the buttstock and you should be able to rock the whole barreled action slightly back and forth so that the screws aren't over snug. From there, you're gonna grab on the barreled action and push it down towards the chassis while then tightening up the first, the front action screw until very snug, and then the rear action screw again until very snug. The front action screw and rear action screw should be torqued 60 to 65 inch pounds. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna move on to is our ESS chassis forend. We do offer them in a 12 inch length, a 15 inch and an 18 inch length, but the 15 is our most popular. We also offer the no rail system. We offer a partial rail, which has a small rail up front here and a forend that features a full top rail. So all three lengths of the forend and all three configurations have full M-lock slots on most of the surfaces that are exposed to suit your different shooting needs. So now that we've got the chassis base installed, we're ready to install the forend. First thing you want to do is remove the three screws that are shipped installed. And what we're going to do is take the barrel action. Now that's in the chassis base. We're going to rotate it upwards, slide your forend over top of the barrel, and you're going to push it all the way back until it seats up against the chassis base. And you'll see there's a nice continuous line around the side. Now that we've got that, 
we'll take these screws again and without removing the polymer foregrip on here, we're just going to slide them right through the holes in the underside and we're going to tighten them up with a 530 seconds Allen key, which is consistent across all of the different um, forends. So again, we just want to make sure that they're snug and that everything is holding in place without being over torqued just yet. So the polymer foregrip can be exchanged for different accessories like our ESS integrated Arca base, but currently we have it just installed with the standard polymer. And all I'm doing right now is going through, torquing everything up to snug. There you go. Now we're all snug, your forearm's installed, and that's all ready to go. So this is our ESS buttstock, the next point in our installation here. The ESS buttstock has a bunch of cool features on it, such as your toolless adjustment uh, for your butt pad height, also for your length of pull, which you can adjust in and out, and also your cheek riser height uh, to really fit the buttstock to the shooter. We do also offer some of the cant adjustability, left and right movement in your butt pad, and same thing with your cheek riser. One of the other really neat features about the buttstock is it has a purpose-built, unique interface here that's different from every other chassis on the market, which was designed around the ESS chassis system to be rigid, solid, and also slim enough that you could get your thumb in there easily for the thumb shelves that are designed on the chassis. So our first step for installing the buttstock is to remove the included bolt out of the back of the chassis. And we're going to align the interface on the buttstock and slide it right in there. You're going to then take your bolt and just thread it in by hand, which can be a little tricky at times. Thread it in just a couple threads inside the chassis. And you're going to take a 5 16 Allen key, which is also standard across all of the ESS buttstocks. And you do want to ensure that you have a ball head type Allen key for this. As you'll see right now, I've got to come in on quite a bit of an angle to actually reach in and be able to tighten this up correctly. So one tip for your first time installation on this chassis is to put just a little bit of tape around the edge of that pocket just so you don't scratch up your actual Cerakote. So what we're going to do is just keep installing it until it's nice and snug into the buttstock, like so. So now once, once we've snugged everything up, we'll tilt it over and we're going to crank down on the Allen key and ensure that it's really tight in place. So now that we've got our forend, buttstock and chassis base installed, our next steps would be to start adding the accessories. So you would add something like your pistol grip and we do ship all the pistol grip screws installed on our ESS bases so that you can just install it uh, as you go. You would then attach your magazines when you're ready to fit them up and make sure that your round cycle out of them. Right now we have a 20 MOA base uh, installed on this action here, but if you were to go to a full rail or a partial rail forend, you may need a 20 MOA ESS tall scope base to ensure that your scope aligns correctly with the rail on top. Other than that, your chassis system is ready to go. You would just now insert your bolt back in and you're ready for the range. Yeah.